Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I just found out there's a card collecting club in my hometown, and the leader of the club is a famous person who lives in the same town. So of course, you know me, I had to try to get in as well. But when I applied, the host said I have to pass some kind of rigorous card collecting test. But the leader also said I can't collect anything like baseball cards or Pokemon cards or even Animal Crossing Amiibo cards, so I went with the next best thing, Mario Sports Superstars Amiibo cards. And I can't say I'm proud of this, but it's for a club where the leader is a famous person. I'm Your Biggest Fanatic is the episode where Spongebob tries to join a jellyfishing club named the Jelly Spotters, which is run by a jerkbag jellyfish enthusiast named Kevin the Sea Cucumber. Like No Free Rides, this episode aired on March 7, 2001, according to this website, and is the episode that introduces everybody's favorite sea cucumber, Kevin. For the longest time, this was the only episode in the main series that featured Kevin. He has appeared later in a couple episodes from the modern season, but he doesn't appear nearly as much as somebody like Bubble Bass does. Like Bubble Bass, Kevin is also voiced by D. Bradley Baker, who also voices Squilliam Fancy Son. This episode is also the second time where Spongebob and Patrick go to a jellyfish convention, the first time being episode 27, I Was a Teenage Gary, even though it was only mentioned and was never shown on screen at any point. Speaking of which, I remember when I was young, I was thinking about both of these episodes and wondered if they both took place at the same time. This was only a phase though, and I soon learned the truth about it, but I'll get to that later. For now, let's watch this episode and see how great it is. So the episode starts up and Spongebob and Patrick are at a biannual jellyfish convention. Patrick kept touching things even though he wasn't allowed to. Spongebob saw the Jelly Spotters, a club for jellyfish enthusiasts, and their leader, Kevin the Sea Cucumber. <sighs> I remember my friend Kevin from school. Spongebob was in awe by just looking at Kevin, but Patrick told Spongebob he was being an absolute geek for doing that, but was then distracted by the mere sight of the convention's mascot, Jeffrey Jellyfish. Spongebob went over to the Jelly Spotters and kept saying, Hi Kevin. And eventually went on stage saying he would do anything for Kevin, and then proved it by jumping off a building and punching himself in the face. Everybody laughed at this, and Kevin thought he should come jellyfishing despite the other club members calling him a geek. And yet, they're not different at all. But Kevin didn't plan on letting Spongebob join the club and only wanted to see him get stung multiple times. And when he asked Spongebob to try out for the Jelly Spotters, Spongebob was immediately on board. Kevin and the other club members went to Jellyfish Fields riding on Spongebob. And when they got there, Spongebob was too excited to handle himself. Kevin told Spongebob to pass some tests before he can join. His first test was to catch a jellyfish, but a jellyfish just flew into Spongebob's net. Well, he technically never caught it. The jellyfish flew into the net, sacrificing himself. Kevin swatted the jellyfish and immediately got stung. Kevin told Spongebob to catch two jellyfish, and two jellyfish flew into the net. Following that was 20 jellyfish, so 18 flew into the net, and he then got stung by all of them. Later, Kevin told Spongebob to let jellyfish eat jelly off his face. Who wants to lick my cheeks? Oh yeah? Which ones? Some jellyfish came around and caused Spongebob to sneeze the jellyfish, who stung Kevin's eyeballs. Kevin still had Spongebob take multiple tests, and after every test, Kevin still got stung by every jellyfish Spongebob caught. When Kevin's entire body was stung, he was so infuriated, but calmly told Spongebob that the final test would be catching a queen jellyfish. The jelly spotters tied Spongebob up as bait and gave him the queen jellyfish call, which only sounded the word loser. So the only sound that summons a queen jellyfish is the word loser from a flat horn. Kevin and the others hid behind a bush while Spongebob continued to lose a call. After a long time, the queen jellyfish did show up, but Spongebob saw Kevin and the others were gone, and he himself got stung by the queen jellyfish. Spongebob ran away and was cornered at the edge of a cliff. He then found out the queen jellyfish was Kevin and the others, who then teased him about being zapped. And yet, he was stung more times than Spongebob ever was. Kevin revealed he didn't actually intend on letting Spongebob join the Jelly Spotters, and he revealed he also did the same thing to some of his other fans. Kevin and the other Jelly Spotters started teasing Spongebob again, but during this, a King Jellyfish came up and thought the Queen Jellyfish was an actual Queen Jellyfish and tried to kiss her. They all run away with the King Jellyfish chasing after them. 
The queen jellyfish robot crashed into a billboard and the king was mad that this was fake and cornered Spongebob, Kevin, and the jelly spotters in a cave. Kevin, under pressure, admitted he was only into the jelly spotters for the fashion and started to break down and so did the others. Spongebob stepped up to the occasion and blew a bubble in the shape of a pie and the king jellyfish was swooned. That's made out of soap, which means the king jellyfish will be eating soap. The other club members cheered for Spongebob, but Kevin still refused to let Spongebob in because he didn't catch a queen jellyfish. The others got pissed off and ripped Kevin's hat, which wasn't really a hat. And this isn't a box. It's a projectile. Back at the convention, Spongebob and Patrick met up, and Spongebob turned down being in the club because it's about jellyfish and not Kevin. Patrick's pleased with Spongebob learning that hero worship is unhealthy, pulls a tied up Jeffrey in a wagon, and the episode ends. So that was I'm Your Biggest Fanatic, and that is an amazing episode. I have a lot to say about it, and just like last time, I'm starting with my own stupid childish thoughts about certain things. First, let's go back to what I said about the Jellyfish Convention, where I thought that maybe this took place around the same time of the Jellyfish Convention from I Was a Teenage Gary. At some point when I was an older kid, I remembered how both of these episodes mentioned a jellyfishing convention, and for a little while, I thought this episode took place during the events of that episode. Sure, you can very easily say that this convention is in Bikini Bottom, but Spongebob and Patrick don't specifically say where it's taking place, so at first glance, it is highly possible that they were in Ukulele Bottom for this convention. Also, as a really young kid, way before I had this theory, I didn't know what ukulele or bottom meant. However, when I did have this prediction, I looked at the finer details and realized what really debunks this theory. In I Was a Teenage Gary, Patrick says the convention is annual. The annual jellyfish convention in ukulele bottom this weekend! Whereas the convention in this episode is biannual. We're actually here at the biannual jellyfish convention. Which means that no matter where this convention takes place, it happens every two years, whereas the other convention takes place every one year. I thought this would have been a cool detail, but it turned out to not be the case. But that's not a big deal at all. It was also a short-lived theory anyway, so it doesn't matter whatever way you slice it. Sometimes I also like to wonder how Jeffrey Jellyfish was tied up. This can be either Patrick himself did it, which is the most likely scenario, or maybe the guard who kept telling Patrick not to touch accidentally attacked Jeffrey thinking he was Patrick somehow. Either way, it's something fun to think about, but as usual, it in no way affected my enjoyment of this episode, that enjoyment of which is massive. Speaking of which, time for me to praise this episode. As usual, there are a lot of really funny things I love about this episode. I love Spongebob idolizing Kevin by jumping off a building, saying, Hi, Kevin. Over and over again, and offering to punch himself in the face in a painful way. One of my all-time favorite scenes of this episode was when Spongebob was very excited and very jittery and when Kevin told him to stop and those two jars froze in the air. Something about that was always so funny to me. I always loved when the jellyfish automatically flew into Spongebob's net whenever Kevin told Spongebob to catch them. Of course, I also love the running gag of one of the club members going wah, 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 throughout the episode no matter when it happened. It was also really funny every time Kevin got stung by jellyfish, especially during the montage, which ended with Kevin looking like a pink monster. Fun fact, for any of you who are wondering, when Kevin tells Spongebob to catch 20 jellyfish, if you count quickly at any time during this shot, you'll see that there are indeed 20 jellyfish. Speaking of which, I also really like Kevin himself. Sure, he may be a jerk, but this episode does show him off pretty well. He may be rude and conceited, but that is supposed to be his character. I won't deny he does unlikable things like make the queen jellyfish contraption to zap and scare Spongebob and reject all the other people who wanted to join the jelly spotters, but considering he's supposed to be the antagonist of this episode, these actions make sense. And he gets comeuppance throughout the episode when he gets stung by all multiple jellyfish Spongebob catches and when the other jelly spotters rip off his hair that just so happens to look like a crown. And of course, you can't help but laugh when he gets stung by the jellyfish. While we're on the topic of characters, I think Patrick is great in this episode. 
SpongeBob is idolizing a nerdy pickle, and Patrick tries to talk sense into SpongeBob, saying this isn't a great mentality, join the club just because the leader is somebody popular. And then at the end of the episode, when he's proud of SpongeBob for learning that hero worship is unhealthy. But despite that, it's almost pointless because he loves Jeffrey Jellyfish. But of course, Jeffrey's a mascot, not a nerd. Oh, thank God. Also, a friend of mine just absolutely loves when Patrick says, Come on, Jeffrey. I can't say I blame her, though. And of course, I also love Patrick going around touching everything and is followed by the guard telling him not to touch. There's also a bunch of smaller things I like about this episode. I like the gag where Spongebob takes the nets and jars out of his pants, the jellyfish beard Spongebob has in this shot, and all these hills when Spongebob is running for his life. Additionally, there's also a tiny bit of continuity here. When Spongebob encounters the king jellyfish, he stands on one foot to blow the pie-shaped bubble. This, of course, is a reference to Spongebob's bubble blowing technique from episode 4, Bubble Stand. Almost every time he blows a bubble in that episode, he stands on one foot, which he also does in this episode. That's an attention to detail I always love. After talking about this episode and its sister episode, episode 59, No Free Rides, I think that this episode pair might just be my favorite episode pair of season 2. In terms of nostalgia, there is another episode pair that I also watched a ton as a kid, specifically episodes 65, Shanghai, and 66, Gary Takes a Bath, and of course, I think they're still good to this day. But even with all the amazing episodes of season 2, these two episodes might just be my favorite pair. It is pretty close between this pair and a couple others, but in recent years, both of these episodes had me laughing the most across most of the whole season. Even just referring to this episode alone, it's always been a favorite of mine as a child and still is to this day. I'm Your Biggest Fanatic is an amazing episode. There are so many hilarious sequences and all the characters in it are so strong, which I think is something that makes certain episodes like this one stand out a bit more. Even though Kevin, the most notable character introduced here, was a big jerk, it is intentional because he's the antagonist of this episode, and he's just mean in general. But even so, this episode is still all around great. This episode also taught me that hero worship is unhealthy, and joining that trading card club just because the leader is a famous person who lives in my hometown, it just ain't worth it. It's about the cards themselves, not the famous person. And good thing I realized before I collected too many of these cards. Wait. Damn it.